Welcome to Why Though the Podcast. <laughs> we did it. That Baby. was amazing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to Why Though the Podcast. I'm Lizzie Acker. I have an advice column for the Oregonian Oregon Live called Why Though. Yeah, it's the um, advice column version of this very podcast that you're listening to. I'm Destiny Johnson. I'm helping Lizzie turn this into a podcast. I'm a social media producer at the Oregonian. And she is invaluable. Oh, thank you so much. She's very, very kind. You know what's mm-hmm. also invaluable, Lizzie? What? Therapy. Oh, therapy. Yeah. Do I you get therapized? That. I actually don't get therapized. Okay. I have in the past. I know you're a big proponent of it. I'm a so. big proponent of it. Um, I mean, I think the reason I probably don't get therapized is because I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and absolutely. to be quite honest, like, I think like most relationships, therapy is a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, It takes a while sometimes to find the right person. Yeah. And um, that can be kind of daunting. To me, that feels daunting right now in my life. Sure. um, But I am a huge proponent of it. I have. (laughs) I was just saying, have I ever told you a story about how I went to Courtney Love's mom, who was a therapist in my town? don't think so (laughs) (laughs) that's wild courtney loves mom was a therapist in corvallis oregon may still be wow and um i when i was 18 Mm -hmm. i was heartbroken i'm so sorry as one is at the age of 18 Uh when their true love um is uh too religious to be in a relationship with them because of the temptations of the flesh if you will oh dramatic Probably more information. Well, you know, it's a classic 18-year-old dilemma. I don't know if it is anymore. Are people still that religious? Or 18-year-old? I bet there's still 18-year-olds that are that religious. I'm sure that there are. I can't say I was around them. But the purity ring was a big thing when I was young. So Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I bet there still are. Because, yeah, you know, probably. that's a pretty strong culture. And then if you're, like, in public school, you know, you're mixing. Uh-huh. I grew up without religion. Uh-huh. Um, very purposefully. And I... I really thought, I don't know why I'm going into this because it's not really related to anything, but, you know, I was like, I would have sex, you know, as long as I was truly in love. Okay. I, I you know, I wasn't like one of those people that was like, I, I had ethical and moral values, if you sure. will, and very strong ideas about what you should and shouldn't do. Uh-huh. Um, but they weren't like God-based. Right. They were like just based in being an 18 year old <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or a yeah, teen, yeah you know like my ethics and my morals and what i believed in and i believed in true love and i believed that you could only should only really have sex with someone you were truly in love with so i was truly in love with this person i was i don't go to us i stand by that you know yeah it's the first person you love even if you don't love them anymore it's it can be true love i think so at the time i probably wouldn't have said it's possible to have more than one true love in your life sure now i would say it's more than possible absolutely <laughs> it's desired really yeah. anyway so you we went to Courtney up. Love's and I, my mom. M- I was very upset, and I was like, I told my mom the only way I would get therapy was if I could go to Courtney Love's mom. Why? I don't know. I was not a big Courtney Love fan. Um, she also know. seemingly maybe didn't do great by Courtney Love, so I'm a I little confused. I don't think that they are close. Doesn't appear that May way. May not be in touch. Uh huh. Courtney Love wasn't like showing up in Corvallis, but Courtney Love's sure. mom actually looks like exactly like Courtney Love. Wow. Um, and, uh, this was a long time ago and mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I don't think this is, I'm not going to say her name or anything. Sure. Easy to find, easy to find. Yeah, but, you could um, give it a Google if you really want to know. Uh, she did tell me as an 18 year old who was very heartbroken, devastated, that I just felt things more strongly than other people. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot to tell and a young person. That sh- I didn't need therapy. I just felt things more strongly than oh, other people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is a lot right that is yeah i mean i i kind of believed it yeah i feel like that's maybe not great yeah i mean maybe i do i'm not a therapist very strongly i do sure 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 first of all like i could probably still benefit from therapy right i mean maybe she was bored honestly maybe like hearing a teenager talk about their true love is just like okay yeah moving on i mean maybe but it's your job to be bored and to not let me know about it. Right. I personally think everybody can bear benefit oh, from totally. therapy. And I, I know that you feel the same mm-hmm. way. And um, I do get therapized. In fact, I have therapy at 3.30 today. Awesome. Shout out to my, well, she's a psychiatrist, but shout out <laughs> to my psychiatrist. She also does therapy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're talking about this because it's very in the zeitgeist right Yeah, now. we decided today we're going to talk about something zeitgeisty because 
Next week, Destiny's going to a high school journalism institute, which is a very cool program that the Oregonian puts on, and not just the Oregonian, uh, local, not local, state journalists mm-hmm. um, help high schoolers like basically put out a newspaper. Very cool, and yeah. it's awesome that Destiny's doing it. Thank you. I'm excited. I've never done it. I've always wanted to, and now that I have a child, it makes it difficult. Anyway. Those are excuses, Acker. But it's um, a whole week. It is a, a whole week. It's it a big difficult. commitment. Yeah. And then the next three weeks, actually the next month, I'm going to be in Michigan. She's vacationing. I'm vacationing for three weeks. I'm going to see my in-laws and my husband's family and um, hang out in Lake Superior. It's a great Super lake. Super cool. That's a, that was like a joke because oh, yeah, it is okay. one of the great it lakes. It is one of the great, also lakes. A great lakes. It sure is. <laughs> I miss that and I'm so no, sorry. No, it was I funny. It, it was too. good. I didn't even. It wasn't on purpose. Oh yeah. no, it was. I was. Hello, on it was. Yeah. Anyway, so basically, what we're, we're just recording some podcasts to put them in the can, if you will. Yeah. So this one is going to be next week because we're talking about something zeitgeisty. We just yeah. To, why not just talk about this thing? We got to talk about Jonah Hill. None of these people asked us for advice, but no. as professional advice givers, we wanted to weigh in. As people who love gossip and tea, <laughs> that's true. Um, that's the I truth. think ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> like we gotta talk about, we gotta talk about I, as both people who have participated in therapy at different points in our lives. Big proponents of therapy. Texters. Texters. <laughs> yeah, this really just falls into many of the realms of right. which we should talk about. If you're not up and up, Lizzie, do you kind of want to explain what's going on? Um, sure. So Jonah Hill, actor, mm-hmm. uh, well known for such. I think he maybe kind of broke onto the scene in Superbad, which I, d- I did love. Love Superbad. Pineapple Bad. Express. Pineapple Express. He's, he's in a crowd of, of dudes. He was in those James Franco movies. Yeah, it's like those stoner dudes who make movies. Mm. And then he made a documentary with his therapist, which we'll bring up later. Yeah, he was also in The Wolf of Wall Street. That's maybe right. did he win like an Academy Award for that? Well, I don't no, know. I never saw that movie, but. I didn't love it, personally. <laughs> um, but Jonah Hill. So Jonah Hill apparently is dating, was mm-hmm. <laughs> dating. It, Jonah's 39, mm-hmm. and I feel like I also can talk about 39-year-olds as a 40-year-old. I was recently mm-hmm. 39, um, and he's dating a younger woman, was 25, mm-hmm. you said? Her name is Sarah. Do you know her? She was younger when they started Neither dating. Neither of us have been 25 um, in a while. Sarah <laughs> no. Brady is her name. She's Sarah a surfer. Brady. She's a surfer. So they broke up, mm-hmm. and Sarah Brady put a bunch of the texts that Jonah had sent her on Instagram. Yeah. Let's start with um, how do you feel about that? You know. Because I don't think there are really any rights in this situation, yeah. if I'm being honest. You know, like, it's it's interesting because I've seen there's obviously been a lot of um, backlash to Sarah putting those texts on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's very... Uh, culturally expected for someone her age to be honest i'm not like surprised by it yeah um jonah hill is a famous person and i think when you're in the public eye like that there's benefits and drawbacks and Mm -hmm. like like um if if i was dating someone i'm not married but Mm -hmm. you know if i did something stupid and i texted something bad and someone put it put the text that i sent them on instagram the impact I mean, it would be embarrassing and mm-hmm. it would be sad to me, but it wouldn't be like in the news. Yeah, I think ultimately um, she's 25 years old. Her f- right. frontal lobe just fully formed freshly this year. Right. Um, so I, I don't think it was the move to personally to do that uh, just because I do think it probably invites a lot of backlash into her totally. life. And she's like clearly a victim of some not okay behavior right. bad behavior right? bad behavior and um that is difficult when there's a power dynamic with a famous person who's older mm-hmm. than you and acting intellectually superior than you which as you'll see in some of these text messages that's definitely what's happening here um but i i also like would love to think that she's coming at it from the perspective of like this person isn't who you think they are Right. You know, like, uh, who really yeah. knows the people motivation I- behind it, but... Yeah, people have an idea of Jonah Hill. Uh, yeah, I guess, like, it's not something I would choose to do. Yeah, me either. I... But live your life. But I also wouldn't choose to date Jonah Hill. So, like, I mean... <laughs> not after this. <laughs> no, certainly not. <laughs> and I also... in a pow- When there's this power imbalance, she is, in a way, taking some power back for herself. And there mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. some power. Like, what Jonah Hill did is not illegal. Let's, should we read maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So basically the conversation that's surrounding these text messages is about how Jonah Hill is like very publicly in therapy, talks about therapy, talks about what it did for him, glad it possibly helped him. That's up in the air, I would say. However, right. So she shared these text messages on her Instagram story. And um, she said, this is a warning to all of you girls. If your partner's talking to you like this, make sure you have an exit plan. Love you all. Call me if you need an ear. So it basically starts with Jonah Hill, like, talking about his boundaries. Um, And he, I want to be very clear. (laughs) This isn't what boundaries are. But this is what he says boundaries are, right? He says, um... Basically, he's trying to guilt her in some of these. You refuse to let go of some of them, and you've made that very clear, talking about some of her friends, and I hope that makes you happy. And then he sent her a screenshot of her own Instagram picture, a couple of them of her surfing in a one-piece bathing suit. She's a surfer. That's She's her a surfer. Job, or at I least think part so. of it. Something she cares about. Honestly, it doesn't matter if mm-hmm. it's her job. And he says, plain and simple, if you need colon... And here's a list. Buckle in, <laughs> folks. Surfing with men. Boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men. No context of what that means. Right. Um, to model. So wow. p- a potential revenue source for you. Um, that's crossing Jonah Hill's boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit as a surfer. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, to post sexual pictures. What does that even mean? Um, friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting lunch or coffee or something respectful it says i am not the right partner for you if these things bring you to a place of happiness i support it and there will be no hard feelings but my boundaries these are my boundaries for romantic partners my boundaries with you are based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust he also goes on to say, literally just say hello and leave the convo. I love that your therapist thinks I suck. I'm literally the best boyfriend on earth. I also want to make it clear that mm-hmm. in all of these text messages, there is a chance that maybe she erased her responses, mm-hmm. but there is no responses from her. So yeah. he's just going on these long, long tirades. Mm-hmm. Here's here's another. It says, um, you're right. We can't do surf social things or develop trust until you consider me and make decisions that give regard to our relationship. I've been as vulnerable as possible with you. I'm telling you, I am needing you to step up to the plate, which you can. I'm sure of it. But mm-hmm. these losers don't get your time if you want me. Straight up. It's consideration. I respect your love of surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of surfing and being in those situations and lack of awareness are not mutually exclusive. This isn't me. I have my own issues that I own. If you want a marriage and family, you can't use the 25 card. She's literally 25 mm-hmm. years old. Step up and cut the shit. These people don't get your time or your kindness at the sacrifice of mine. Take some accountability and operate with respect. It's that simple. Because I'm tired of your attitude towards surf culture, that contest and that place, because I deserve respect. Some of this doesn't have a lot of context, right. period. I have been more than patient, and then shit like this is still here. Um, screw the contest, screw that place, and screw not respecting me always in every situation within surf culture, or you don't get it. You just don't get me. It's hurtful and unacceptable to me. Get it? I don't know if you get it or care or give a shit that about this stuff more than me, even after Dr. Stern said it loud and clear. Dr. Stern is a couple therapist they were seeing um, for uh, once a week for about four months, she said, for some context there. I mean... I- so should we talk about what a boundary actually is, maybe? Yeah, but I also want to say, first sure. and foremost, adults, and I said this on Twitter, but I'm going to say it here on yeah, the podcast... Yeah, yeah. Adults should not be having this kind of conversation <laughs> over text. <laughs> if you are uh, in a relationship. Yeah, that's wild. You have these conversations. I mean, this is uh, bad. He's wrong. And these are not real boundaries. This is controlling behavior. Yeah. Um, say it to someone's face so they can laugh at you to your face or can tell you absolutely not. Or you can get the real response. Yeah. Like text, no matter what it is, honestly, you should never be having a serious conversation over text. It is so easy to misread. Mm-hmm anything tone content like it's so easy i've seen so many people getting really dumb fights yeah, over text absolutely um he should not say this to her face because it's bad sure um yeah. but like that is my first red flag dude 40 years old you're 40 years old if you're 39 you're 40 sure uh no you yeah. should not be having these conversations over text it is really wild that that is happening uh, not only be humiliated not only because uh 
that somebody can then post on social media, <laughs> exactly. which which you which could be it. like forty percent of the reason why you shouldn't have this, but the <laughs> other sixty percent is because you're a grown ass man, right. and this is weird. I'm very curious about this therapist. Honestly, it seems like this therapist is doing a very bad job. Well, here's the thing. So okay, so a boundary, right? Well, maybe maybe circle back here. Yeah, a boundary back. has nothing to do with anybody else, right? It has everything to do with the kind of behavior that you'll you will incur, you will allow to be done to you, mm-hmm. right? It has nothing to do with the actions of other people. Right. So when you set a boundary, you're not really asking somebody to change their behavior. Mm-hmm. You're just letting them know where you're at. Mm-hmm. I won't be talked to disrespectfully. Right. I won't be cursed at. Mm-hmm. I won't, you know, go out more than two nights a week. Right. You know what I'm I mean? I'm not like going to answer my phone after 10 p.m. Sure. I'm not going to read work emails mm-hmm. after 530. Mm-hmm. Like these things are things that you do. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're not offering up the the ultimatum of you change or fit into this. Right. It's like if you fit into this, like this is a hard line for me and I've set this line for a reason. Mm-hmm. And if if like your behavior doesn't fit into that, then that's OK. That's I totally leave. fine. Yeah. Like, you th- yeah. There isn't a consequence. It's just that is a boundary for me. Right. And that's it. And that's it's it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's not a weapon. Hold it. Right. Exactly. And this isn't even I mean. He's using the word boundary to stand in for um, rules that I have created that you must abide by. Yes. And when boundaries are rules for yourself. Right. Yeah. This is, I mean, it is just such thinly veiled controlling behavior. It's like a little, n- not narcissist in the like, um, di- like I'm diagnosing you as a narcissist right. kind of way, but like in the sense of like the word being mm-hmm. super into yourself. It's just, it's narcissistic from that standpoint to me to be like, these people, they don't deserve your time, but I do. And they don't deserve your time because I said so. That is yeah. heinous. It's and she, again, I have to keep reminding myself that she's 25 years old. 25. I mean, I think, think about, like, I know 25 year olds. I've worked with them. Uh-huh. They are sweet, young babies. We mutually love a 25 year old. Yes. yes. Um, and, like... Already, I think it's a red flag that a man that age is dating someone younger. And if you are, honestly, and uh, sorry to all the our male listeners here who are dating younger I'm people. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Um, actually, I'm not sorry. You're doing that because you can't handle someone who's as mature as, as a woman your age. And, and if you really don't think that, maybe go to therapy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe go to, like, <laughs> not, do not some his soul therapist, searching. though. <laughs> because, like, think about Ask your female friends who are your age. Yeah. Because they're all like, wow. Bro is so immature. He has to find. I mean, I've seen it. I saw it when I was 25, too, with older men mm-hmm. uh, not that I was dating. But like other, you know, like these guys who are dating younger women are generally, in my opinion, super condescending. Yeah. Um, and this is condescending so insecure. behavior. Yeah. And this is insecure and condescending. You yeah. have to be so insecure to create a list of things your partner can and can't do. I mean, insane it's it's not acceptable and i think millennials that's he's a millennial i'm a millennial you're a millennial i am uh, millennial men um s- you know there is this pressure now to be you know more woke and like a feminist and all this stuff mm-hmm. so what he's doing is he's sort of like taking these very traditionally um toxic male relationship behaviors and trying to cover them up whether he's doing it on purpose or not on purpose with therapy woke talk Mm -hmm. and it's bad Mm -hmm. it's not illegal it's just bad yeah lots of things that aren't illegal make you kind of kind of a bad person you know what i mean like i just i think it's really heinous um particularly i mean a lot of people are pointing out the double standards like he went on a weight loss journey posted a lot of shirtless photos Mm -hmm. as he was doing that as you should and could it's your body you can do Mm -hmm. what you want with it on the internet or anywhere else um, and nobody should tell you, be able to tell you for any reason that you can't do that kind of stuff. I mean, that's like kind of a minor mm-hmm. player in this game. Like, obviously, the whole situation is 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 troubling. Um, but this is like, I think what happens when narcissists go to therapy. People, yeah. again, this is not a diagnosis. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I just mean people who are like really into themselves or display really selfish behavior, which this is clearly mm-hmm. selfish behavior. Like, 
when sometimes when they go to therapy and I think this even happens to good people right when they start to go to therapy and they start to hear those words that really explain the things that they weren't able to put words to mm -hmm. it really opens up this new world for them and you mm -hmm. can choose one of two ways to use that mm -hmm. you can start making I statements mm -hmm. I feel like this when you do this mm -hmm. people in therapy therapists are going to mm -hmm. tell you that ain't the way but when mm -hmm. people start therapy early on yeah that's like a lot of the times right. like what they do somebody who is motivated by their own self-interest mm -hmm. it's really easy mm -hmm. especially especially when somebody is much younger than you mm -hmm. to manipulate them into thinking that you're more worldly you're smarter mm -hmm. you're blah 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 i was a young gal <laughs> into inappropriately old men mm -hmm. um for many years i would say <laughs> until i was like hmm this isn't the way because you're so smart for your age uh, yeah you're oh so gosh, mature it's so easy yeah you yeah. It, it's so when you're a young i can only speak from my perspective i'm a cis mm -hmm. woman when you're a young woman mm -hmm. and an older man tells you mm -hmm. gives you some kind of validation you're like wow really mm -hmm. because you're really taught to value that just like in society right, like nobody course. sits down and tells you you need to respect men but it's yeah. just like the way that mm -hmm. society works i feel so bad for her right i mean it is an interesting time like there is this interesting thing about being a young woman where you suddenly have some power where mm -hmm. you never mm -hmm. did before. At least right. it feels like you do. Yeah. Especially when men who are older start giving you this attention. And um, I've had this interesting thing happen to me a couple of times <laughs> recently where a young woman, um, younger, like in their 20s and 30s, found out how old I am. I'm 40, as mm -hmm. I've said about a thousand times. <laughs> and we're kind of like both shocked and apologetic. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, because, and because in our society, I think, you know, they're terrified of becoming 40. And so funny. in some way, almost becoming irrelevant. And it's not that, I mean, I have felt this when I, there was a certain point in my life when I was young, in my mid, late 20s, when I did get, like, a lot of really positive feedback from older men I in a professional way. Mm -hmm. You know, like but you're so smart and you're like, you know, they really wanted to push for me and they really supported me. And, um, then you get to be a certain age and you don't have that anymore. Like, mm -hmm. where did it go? Well, our society really treats really women as valuable when men in power want to have sex with them. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is like as pretty much how it is. Right. So I understand feeling, terrified of becoming 40 though i will say it's just so much better actually i'm like so happy to be where i am today mm -hmm. um and i also it makes me understand why sarah published these as much as i wouldn't do it, it makes me it's sad like, for her i'm so sad for her and she's she was being so mistreated yeah and it's like you and know like, like you want other people to know that yeah. you know like this guy is being a effing dick <laughs> And you can tell, even just based off the fact that she said she went to couples therapy, that she bought into this narrative for a while. Yeah. And that can do something to your brain in mm -hmm. the for the future. When you sort of, it can make you feel like a dinged can. When mm -hmm. you're so young and you, you feel like you've fallen for some great mm -hmm. ruse or something, it can make you feel some kind of way about yourself. So I hope that she does, and I hope she feels powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's... There was yeah. this interesting thing about how Jonah Hill's liking her pictures in her bikini, or not even she's not even wearing a bikini. He slid into her DMs because of the photo, right? Yeah, so that's how they start talking. He just wants her to be sexually available to him, and only him, and only him. Mm -hmm. Um, not that she's being available by right. posting pictures, right? But only he, she she belongs to him. And is only what, she, what he's like saying. Gross men think that somebody's being sexually available when they post photos on their Instagram. Right. Only people who think that they actually own you as property. I mean, that's how it is. That Like, he, you cannot, I mean, if, if I have never been in a relationship where someone told me, like, I couldn't be friends with other men, but if they did, I would, I mean, okay, it, but when you're young, it's really hard to, to do what I'm about to say, but, like, that is a huge red flag. Mm -hmm. If someone is so insecure that they're telling you the genders or the types of friends you can have mm -hmm. no or making you prioritize them over a passion and a skill that you've yes. been doing for your logically your whole right. life that's also a huge red flag and you know uh 
Lizzie, if you haven't heard Lizzie's 40, <laughs> if you haven't heard, I'm 30. Mm-hmm. I'll be 31 this year. Um, so, you know, we're in the same age bracket as you get older. Mm-hmm. The, the gaps start to matter much less. <laughs> um, but I just am so thankful, you know, in the vein of you talking about women fearing um, getting older. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad now to have the perspective to know that if somebody ever talked to me like that, and this is in no way blaming Sarah for staying or for sharing these or for Mm -hmm. anything like that. But I just now I'm so thankful that I personally have the perspective to know that if somebody talks to me like that, my boundary is to not interact. Right. And like I'm choosing, I'm not telling you to not interact with me that way. I'm choosing to not interact back. And Which she was doing, by the way, by not responding by to those not, text messages. Absolutely. I think that she was doing the right thing. But again, I don't know if right. she was or, or wasn't. I'm not saying that she fabricated them to make herself look better or anything. But right. I mean, you just you just don't you don't, don't know. know. You don't yeah. know. You know what I mean? Like her responses may have not been relevant in any way either. She could have just been like, OK, like we will never know. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I'm so thankful for for that experience right. that I learned through therapy to how, how to build an actual boundary. Right. And I mean, she is so young and yeah. it is just so hard and I, I've seen it in so many times. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess like, yeah, a, a, a man who's in power, a position of power mm-hmm. and um, famous. Yeah. You know, like that's automatically a position of power. It's automatically a position of power. Like, I don't know. But yeah, telling, telling, if someone ever tells you you can't pursue your passions because it hurts them, I mean, there are so many red flags. Yeah, that has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you. Like, honestly, bless her little heart. I hope she's doing okay. I hope she's out there surfing right now. Yeah, I hope she's wearing the hottest bikini and I hope she looks great because she's very beautiful. Yeah, post as many pictures of yourself as you want. Please. It's your body. Yeah. You know, you get to do what you want with it. So would your advice be something along the lines of uh, go to therapy, but don't be like Jonah Hill? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say I think therapy is really good. Therapy does not make you a better person. Mm -hmm. It does not cure you. You know, I mean, whatever. It can make you get better on a path towards getting better or whatever. But um, going to therapy does not is not like a one-to-one now you're better right you know and like you were saying uh, a person who has other has has a lot of like self-involvement issues um can use it as a tool if if they don't have i mean they don't have a really good therapist who's willing to tell them like you're actually wrong here Mm -hmm. or they're not willing to listen i mean i think there are lots of ways to get to a point of learning how to take (laughs) responsibility I'm so sorry. That's my insulin pump. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sorry. It's bejeweled. It is. It's just telling you that my blood sugar is high. Why don't you leave me alone and do your job, insulin pump? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, what I was saying is like, there's lots of ways to get to a point of um, not being this self-involved. And right. clearly, therapy isn't working for Jonah Hill. So maybe like uh, being lambasted on the internet will. Hopefully, Probably maybe not. like a. Th- three month silent meditation retreat (laughs) i would love that maybe like um going to do like manual labor somewhere i don't even know oh my god i'm so (laughs) sorry (laughs) don't be sorry i can't shut it off because it's like the alerts make me know that um, I'm alive or yeah, dying. It's keeping you alive, and we really love that for you. It is, but your pancreas doesn't make noise, so. <laughs> Not currently. Yeah. Not that I know of. It's probably making some sort of gurgling sound. Probably. Cute, though. <laughs> I don't know if any internal organ is cute, <laughs> Destiny. But um, I like that you think that. Mm. I like that perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, like, I think the the really important thing that Jonah Hill, if I was giving Jonah Hill some advice. Mm-hmm. Jonah Hill, listen up. Jonah Hill, I would be like, um, you're an adult now. You're an adult now. You need to take responsibility for yourself, mm-hmm. for your own actions. Um, and we can start with the fact that you decided to send all these text messages and now they're public. Yeah. So don't send these kind of text messages start thinking about how you need to change yourself and not how the world needs to change for you. Mm -hmm. Consider the fact that you are actually 
attempting to control someone in an abusive way. I mean, you can be emotionally abusive without being physically abusive. And I would say, well, I think this does not fall in line of criminal behavior. It does to me fall in the line of emotional abuse. Just being a jerk. Yeah, <laughs> being a jerk, um, a bad partner. Uh huh. No adult is going to want to be in a relationship with you if you act like this. And it seems like you're deeply insecure. So maybe the therapy isn't working as well as you think it is. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that his therapist is a man. Um, so it could be a little bit of like an echo chamber situation right. here. I mean, therapists are human beings. Absolutely. Just like, just like doctors are human beings. Yeah. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. For sure. Yeah, uh, therapy just gives you the tools in your proverbial life toolbox to be able to deal with life a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and you get to choose whether you use the screwdriver to screw stuff in or to beat somebody over the head with it. I would suggest mm -hmm. using it for its intended purpose mm -hmm. and not for controlling other people. But, you know, whatever. But you know what? Um, these texts got a little messy, but you know oh, what texts... Yeah aren't oh, messy if you want and texts no, that non messy texts can talk about you should text the word advice to 503-751-8731 and then click the link and subscribe and guess who you'll be getting non messy not weird texts from non controlling texts non controlling messages. i'm not going to send you a list of behaviors that are my boundary <laughs> but lizzie will text you about her upcoming uh, topics for her advice column she'll ask you for your Asking advice questions. um and yeah, well, I mean, Lizzie will do most of the texting, but if you send anything juicy and you want to gossip with us, I'm happy to read it, too. And to um, be honest, I'd love to see pictures of you surfing. Surfing is heck hella yes. tight. I'm really bad at it, but I love to surf. I've never tried, but I would love to try. Um, my okay. secret talent isn't surfing. It is that I, in um, mi late middle school, early high school, competed in DDR competitions, so I'm really good at DDR. It only comes up when we go to, like, arcades, but... You're going to need to... I just figured out what DDR is. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's Dance Dance Revolution. It is. I'm actually... I actually played the one called Pump It Up, which is the one that has the corners in the middle, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> um, I'm going to need to see that. Uh, well... Maybe we'll do a live podcast from Dave and Buster's one day. Oh, my gosh, Ooh. yes. I also want to mention, just before we leave, this is... It's completely off topic, but I want to let you know that Darcel 15's show place, which is a drag... Yeah. Um, it was founded by the world's oldest drag queen who just passed away earlier this year, um, Walter, Walter Cole Sr., who passed away in his 90s. He was the oldest working drag queen. The club had a 48-hour dragathon. They beat the world record for the longest drag show and raised more than $250,000 for the Trevor Project, which is a lifeline for queer youth, which is deeply important to me. And amazing. thought I should mention, um, I spent a lot of, I spent 16 hours so there. It's so, so amazing <laughs> that you did that. And I want to say that I interviewed Walter Cole while I was pregnant with wow. Nona. I was uh, very pregnant, like mm -hmm. about to give birth. And he was like 89 at the time. Yeah. And he was so sweet. Just even thinking about it sort of makes me tear up. Yeah. Because That's what everybody I says about him. He was a wonderful person. Yeah. I met him like the one time yeah. and wrote this, you know, piece about him. And, um, just like a really really good person yeah and you know how you can tell like beyond that like everyone says that about him mm -hmm. um he was married and he had two kids mm. to a woman mm -hmm. and then fell in love with a man sure. roxy and he remained like he still had this really close relationship with his wife and his children yeah. like it was like he was just such a wonderful person everybody loves him i went to his memorial at um downtown yeah. in kelly yeah um and, you know, there were multiple former Oregon governors there. Yeah. So many people. I think he touched so many people's, lives, many people's lives and he really kept the art and the entertainment of drag alive here in Portland. He really nurtured that for a lot of really young queer people, young drag yeah. queens. I talked to so many people who were performing there who just have the kindest things to say about him and the show place. It still goes on. It's, it's helmed mostly by Poison Waters, who's a, a drag icon here and a longtime friend of Darcel's. Um just amazing you can find that on our website at organlive.com but yeah. while you're there you should go to organlive.com slash why though oh yeah, w-h-y-t-h-o you can find um lizzie's column there which is yeah. great you should read it it's a distilled version of us chatting back and forth into the ether but, but this one is special yeah this, this one's this, this is you're also going to find the podcast at organlive.com slash why though mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um and for the next couple of weeks, I think you're going to find podcasts that are not actually related to the column. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them will be, but yes. you know, we've been recording these in advance because like I said, I'm going on vacation. 
Destiny's going to high school journalism institute. Um, that does not mean you shouldn't text the word advice mm-hmm. to five zero three seven five one eight seven three one and then click the link and subscribe. I want to know if you do that, just text me and tell me your favorite flavor of ice cream. Yeah. Tell me something. Or what you think about this Jonah Hill nonsense. Yeah, exactly. Um, or if you've ever gotten any really toxic text messages. Oh, yeah. We can screenshot them and share them with us. I it's a safe like, space. You know what? This really r- reminds me of some things I've heard about, like my mom say, about things that happened to her in the 70s with mm. men using, at that time, um, like, you know, these social movements are nothing new. And um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y- there were men who would be, like, going to sort of, like, encounter groups and, like, into, like... Um, ethical non-monogamy and stuff like that but using them in really toxic ways oh yeah i mean that still happens oh it definitely does it's yeah. just not new it's not new. you know no, what no. jonah hill is not cr- not like doing anything super original no. i think um what is interesting is that his girlfriend chose to publish his text messages yeah and you know what don't blame her i just don't blame her it's my favorite hypothesis mess around and find out <laughs> <laughs> it works every time <laughs> I wish it worked more, actually. Yeah, it, it works if you want it to work. Right. I think a lot, you of, know, people, if you a lot of people mess around, and sure. unfortunately, it takes them a long time to find out. Yeah. Well, good luck to Jonah Hill, but mostly to Sarah Brady. Yeah. Mostly and good luck to her. You know, Beanie Feldstein, talk to your bro. Tell him this ain't it. Not on, brother. Yeah, for real. What would you do if your brother? I'm like, think I have a brother, so. I do. Have a brother. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, hey, dude. I would not be nice about it. Yeah. I mean, I really it a sister is one of the people who can be really not nice it. About would it. probably drive a wedge. I would be really yeah. mean about it, I think. I have no patience for I have no patience for that. I mm-hmm. Just imagine how tired non-men are. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway, well, thanks for listening <laughs> Thank to this so very much. special is- issue episode. Yeah. We want to talk about stuff it's. that's in the zeitgeist, too. So if you see something going on that we don't see, um, yeah, text Lizzie, 503-751-8731. We will catch you guys on the pod next week. Even though we'll be away, you won't have to miss us. No, we'll be here. We'll, we'll be miss in you your though. ears, mm-hmm. whispering. Toodaloo. Bye. <laughs> For listening to why though the podcast subscribe for weekly episodes wherever you listen to podcasts and don't forget to leave us a five-star review if you're looking for more why though check out my column that comes out every tuesday on oregonlive.com you can support our local journalism by going to oregonlive.com slash pod support